what's going on everybody it's your boy sailor turn gamer and we are back in the building coming at you with another dauntless video today's dauntless video we are talking about a new build people yes a new build i've come out with a few repeater builds i'll leave a link to our build channel in the description below you guys can check out that playlist and get a lot of good stuff there we got a lot of builds up there most of them are repeated builds but we do have a hammer build up there and i'm coming out with more builds as we speak but as far as our repeater builds i've had a couple of people say that some of the builds that i've come out with are in game and so i wanted to come up with a build that i think is very effective and works pretty well and you can actually use this build early in the game i'm calling it my day one build because the pieces that exist here the fiery breastplate the Nasher, the Drask, these are things that you can get relatively early. As a matter of fact, you can get these within an hour of playing the game. So, this is a way to where you can have these pieces and then you can work towards grabbing these perks and eventually get something similar to this. Now, I wanted to show that this build isn't even at its full capabilities and what I mean by that is that I have here on the Greaves a plus two sharpen which I should have a plus three sharpen, but um, I don't have it yet, and that's okay because this is a day one build and it's it's room for improvement. So when picking these perks and when choosing the armor, I wanted to choose perks in an armor as long as with a lantern that would actually play well together for usage in the beginning of the game and all the way up to pretty much whenever you want to stop, even end game if that's where you want to take it. If you know that you are loving the repeaters and you want something that you can use for a very long time, then this is a good place to look at. Because when we look at the perks, and we're going to break this down, right? We have plus 6 etheric attunement, evasion, plus 6 evasive fury, plus 6 rage hunter. Right now we got a plus 5 sharpened, but this is capable of having a plus 6 sharpened with plus 3 tough. So, when we think about why did we go with what we decided to go with, well really it came down to looking at the armor that you had available to you at the beginning of the game and determining what armor would be best for using this particular weapon and that's the repeaters so taking it into account we went with Drask helmet because of the plus three etheric attunement that you can get on this so you'll be working your way up towards a better and better etheric attunement as you begin to upgrade it and as you go through and you hunt Drask you beat this guy down You'll learn his attack patterns, and in the process of maxing out the Drax helmet, you can actually go through and why not? You might, you can max out the rest of his armor too while you're at it. But this way it gives you guys a little bit of focus and help in determining like what pieces will go well with the repeaters. So of course you have your Drax helmet like I talked about. That's really really great, and that's gonna play into that etheric attunement. So. Let's go down to the lantern really, really quickly. There's not a lot of lanterns we're going to have in the beginning that are good. In my opinion, one of the best lanterns in the game is Strike Zeal. I use it in pretty much most of my builds. I pretty much only swap between this and a later game lantern. So with that, the one of the earliest lanterns you get in the game is Strike Zeal. And that's going to pair up well because Etheric Attunement, you can grow that on there. And you're going to get maximum Etheric Attunement, which is great. And what's even better, Strike Seal is so great, it's because of the hold ability, which is going to give you 15% movement speed and attack speed. So earlier on in the game, you're already going to have this consistent way to get attack speed. That is also something that you are going to be using a lot towards the later ends of the game. And also, that's just something you're going to have to get a feel for, which is making sure that you use your lantern ability when you have it to have that 100% uptime. So that's something that's really, really clutch. Also, that's where we put that plus two sharpen I was talking about, which you can eventually get that up to plus three if you have it. And you can work on that by going to the middleman. Let's talk about our Nasher's Grips. Our Nasher's Grips was a slam dunk because it comes with a power slot and it rolls with plus three Rage Hunter once you max it out. So you can have Rage Hunter on there and get another mod for Rage Hunter. And if this is maxed out, once you get it to that point, you can have a plus three rage hunter with a plus three rage hunter modener for another maximum perk of plus six rage hunter which is pretty great as you're going through the beginning of the game of course every behemoth is going to get enraged at some point so being able to deal an additional 40 percent extra damage to an enraged behemoth is clutch and key for a lot of the early game stuff you can get through 
with this pretty pretty quickly and combining that with the sharpen you're going to have that additional 30 percent part damage once you max it out but as you work through you're going to have that additional part damage which is going to be great also once you get it to tier four so tiers four through six which is very very possible to do uh, once you get it there you're going to be able to have extra abilities when it comes to your dodge so right now your dodging is going to give your next weapon attack an additional 50% part break damage but if you get that maxed out to that plus six you're going to be able to have an additional 100% which is pretty clutch and pretty key and it's great because we put like you said we put that plus three sharpen on the legs and then if we go up to our helmet that's also where we put that other sharpen at. so this just gives you an idea of parts to keep in mind while you're actually going through because not only, again guys, not only can this build be used in the beginning stages of the game, but you can take this all the way through and ball out. So let's talk about our Flowery Blessed Prey. You guys know that pretty well. That comes from Embermane. And this is a sweet place to put Evasion. Evasion is one of my favorite perks. Uh, some people don't like this perk as much as I do. And some people don't like it at all. But I think it's really great because having that additional dodge window, especially early on in the game when you're still learning how to play where to dodge when to dodge it only helps and it pairs up very very well because we have evasive fury that released on the breastplate so having that evasive fury is going to give you anywhere between a four percent to twenty five percent attack speed when you dodge through and having that bigger dodge window is going to allow you to dodge through so it's pretty great so you can avoid a lot of attacks this way and when you avoid those attacks using evasion you're going to be able to do that extra part damage and once the behemoth gets mad you have capability of hitting upwards to 40 percent additional damage not to mention the nasher treads they actually rode they come with toughness so for maxing that out eventually you're going to have the capabilities of having 150 additional max health on this build which is also going to increase your overall increased healing by additional 15 percent so that's going to be clutch when you are you know in a position where you may have made a mistake and you had to use one of your potions or you had to get some help from an aether vent you're going to get an additional 15 percent so hey extra health means one less health potion that you have to use or it means one less time you have to take for that aether vent which is pretty great can't go wrong with additional health and let's lastly talk about our ICM repeaters. So, ideally you're going to use whatever barrel that you have at the moment. I highly encourage anybody that likes playing with the repeaters to just go all in. And I think one of the most things you should prioritize is upgrading your mod slots in all of your slots for your repeaters. Because if you know this is going to be your go-to weapon, you need to be prepared for whatever. So, your mod slot for the barrel is going to be dependent on what you have available and what is going to be advantageous against that battle. If you are facing a behemoth that is a neutral behemoth then I encourage you to use the storm barrel because after a while you can shock or paralyze the enemy and then you'll have extra seconds to do damage. It usually happens at least once if not twice per hunt. It's pretty great. Salvo's chamber is one of the best hands down in the game. I know we only have three options but it's still it's so good and you get to start off with it and so if you're early on in the game this is what you have and if you got to the point where you can unlock marksman's chamber or full board chamber i still highly encourage you to use salvo's chamber it's pretty great as far as the captain grips conversations and saboteur's grip unless there is a rework done in the future which if that ever happens i will cover it here but unless something changes with the saboteur's grip i encourage you to use captain's grip it is just so good uh, having that additional 20% attack speed is amazing and keep in mind throwing that captain's grip out while it's empowered You're going to be able to give your teammates that buff early on in the game So that is pretty awesome and pairing that up with evasive fury You have a possibility to have upwards of an additional 45% attack speed at one given time Not to mention the additional 15% so you can have anywhere between 0 to 60% attack speed and I say zero, but not really, because remember the etheric attunement is there, and you have that additional 50% lancing charge from your attacks. So typically what I find myself being in is, is in a situation where I usually have 
90 to 100 percent uptime on strike zeal so you're always going to have a base level of 15 percent attack speed and movement speed and then pairing that up with the evasive fury that can proc and also using your captain's grip that can proc is amazing uh last couple things i want to talk about is the capacitive magazine we're going with this because i believe that is the very first one that you start off with as far as the mod and once you're starting off i would suggest going with capacitive magazine and as you unlock the additional mod slots then the choice is really up to you so once you unlock extraction catalyst i'm i'm a big fan of extraction catalyst this is really up to the player though but i really enjoy extraction catalyst because you have that plus six evasion that's going to give you that bigger dodge window so when you do dodge you're going to have your reduction in your abilities which is going to help with helping you use your actual salvos chamber a lot more often and then when you actually do a dodge you're going to get that 25 percent attack speed buff which is pretty awesome as far as prisms we're going with searing prism but i will say also as well the same thing regards to this use whatever prism you have until you have um as many options as you can and then i would say go with searing prism because of the 60 percent maximum attack speed that you could have and also do to having that ray turner you're just going to be able to do that much more damage or i would suggest going with stoneheart prism if you're new and you're still learning and you're still working your way with this build going with stoneheart prism is going to give you a stacking refreshing health shield so that's pretty great to use when you're still learning and that's pretty much what this build is going to do for you it's going to allow you to have a build that you can reliably depend on when using the repeaters early in the game you can take this up to mid game and you can take this up to late game it's very very flexible but if you just want something to run you uh, by the very first couple weeks you're playing the game or the early stages of the game you can transition from this build to any of the other builds we have on our channel because i do have repeater builds that can be used at any point in the game and i have repeater builds that have armor that you can unlock from the beginning of the game to the middle tier point in the game all the way up till i have a build that requires late game gear so if you are a repeater player then this build is for you along with the rest of the builds we have here on the channel the last couple things to wrap up this repeater section is this is where we're putting our evasive fury and evasion and that's what's giving us that plus six evasive fury and plus six evasion again guys i know if you're at the beginning of the game you may not have these plus threes you might have plus twos but that's okay because you can slot those plus twos in there or those plus ones and you can continue to use those as you gain more perks or as you speak to the middleman to upgrade those i log on every day just to go to the middleman just to go to the hunt pass and grab those little swords or grab whatever special item is there at the time and I talk to the middleman and I make sure to drop off sales. Always drop off sales even if you don't know what you're aiming for. Because when you finally do, you may have what you need already upgraded. And so this is a great way to go because as you are at the beginning of the game or you're completing quests. And you're working your way up through the mastery ranks. You're getting more cores. Some of those cores, whether it's bronze, silver, or gold, they may have what you need. And if it's a bronze and you get a plus one base level perk you can take that to the middleman upgrade it to two take it to the middleman again after a day and upgrade it to three and in a couple days you're going to have maxed out perks that you will need for this particular build so this is a pretty great build for anyone that's starting out and wants to phase their way through if you know you like the repeaters or if you think you like the repeaters this armor this lantern is something that you can get very very soon within the game and it's a fun build at this point in time i'm going to roll over to some gameplay and i'm going to explain pretty much how i play this build all right guys so let's roll into this actual hunt and i'm going to break down everything as far as how the build operates we're going up against a quill shot as you see over there there's our guy right now it's great so remember you got a, an additional 150 percent health so i know we just took damage right there but that's okay you got a lot of extra health you're firing slow you always want to get that reload when you're up close for that empowering 
That's that evasion kicking in right there where you get that clutch dodge. That's evasion kicking in. Go for your tri burst when you have when you have it, unless you have a full lantern. You always want to use that full lantern when you have it. See, it's okay because as you're learning the ropes, if you're taking damage, you do have that additional 150% health from from tough. You always want to use that tri burst when you have it, unless you have a full lantern charge, then use your lantern charge first. Make sure to throw down those, and remember when you do actually dodge, that evasive fury is kicking in. So if you look next to our ability slots, we got a lot of abilities that are just constantly popping off because we keep that, tons of that. Remember that additional 15% health? Well, it's coming into play whenever you get health back. So as you see, we got a large chunk of health back due to the 15%. You just successfully dodged through these attacks due to having that big window. And we're not even talking about the additional upwards to 40% damage you can do when the behemoth is frustrated from being enraged. You always want to stay back, but there is a window in which the repeater can do maximum amount of damage. If you look at my crosshairs, the crosshairs are red. That means that we're within that threshold of being able to do additional damage. If they're white like they are right now, you're not close enough. You want to stay close because you want to be able to get that empowering bonus. And having that empowering bonus is going to modify your ability. So you always want to try to stay as close as you can. I just got hit there. As long as you can stay within reasonable distance, you'll be fine. But having that sharpened on this build is also letting you break parts. So that's pretty nice as well. And as you learn the tendencies of the behemoth, you're going to be able to stay even closer. At pretty much as close as I am, you're going to be able to stay within that pocket range. Having that mod on our repeaters is giving you that ability to have extra ammo, which is pretty nice. Etheric Attunement is kicking in as well if you look. We're basically, we basically have like 100%, 90 to 100% uptime. We basically have 90 to 100% uptime on our Lantern due to the Etheric Attunement. I mean, Etheric Attunement is really, really great. And this is just an example of that. As we move on to the next phase of this fight, I just want you guys to check out. Just pay a little a bit of attention to our actual Lantern. Uh, right now, I want to say it's like a third of the way charged. So just pay attention to how quickly this thing goes up with that additional 50%. And keep in mind, once you have that lantern, always use it. That's what gives you that uptime. It gives you that additional attack speed. Prevents you from attacking so slow. Also, the having the empowered Salvo's grip to have something I call a triburst comes in real, real good handy because... Hitting that triburst gives you so much of your lantern charge back. It's so great. Always throw down your captain's grip when you have it in power so that way you can help your teammates out. And that's really big early in the game to be able to help your teammates out that way and give them additional attack speed. It's nice because when they're mad, even if you want to fall back a little bit because you're not 100% used to the patterns, it's okay because again, you're doing an additional 40% damage. Which is pretty clutch to be able to do an additional 40% damage. If you're new to the patterns, again, remember, rely on your evasion, rely on your timing, and it's going to help you to get better and better and better. And eventually, you can take it off if you feel like you don't need it. If you feel like you would rather try to create a build around something else. But a lot of my late game builds, we use evasion as well because I think it's a really 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 great perk it pairs so well with evasive fury if you see our attack speed is rising up randomly that's that evasive fury every time we dodge if you see in addition to that attack speed going up we're dodging all of these pin missiles if you look at our lantern charge it is just skyrocketing up right now there's that shock so once you do have access to the shock barrel that was that shock barrel actually kicking in right there and he froze up for a second. Because it will shock you at least once. It will shock the behemoth at least once. 
I'm gonna throw our lantern down, make sure we got it. It's okay, look at that additional 150% health kicking in. When you use a potion, that, that extra 15% healing is gonna kick in as well. Evasive Fury just kicked in because we dodged. And it's okay if you get hit, you just wanna learn the patterns of the behemoth. This, this build gives you a lot of protection. And a lot of power power firepower too. And just like that, he's down. So this build can really be something special. It can really put you in a position to go through and get S pluses consistently as you work your way up to get better gear or a different variety of gear. The gear at the beginning of the game, it's early, but it's not bad. It's pretty good in itself. So this build is pretty great for any new slayer that's out there or any intermediate slayer or man even a, even an expert slayer like myself if you just want to play the game a different way focus more on enraging the behemoth focus more on being able to use a, something a little bit different this might be for you I highly suggest you try the build out for yourself and let me know in the comment section what you guys think of the build and if you tried it out tell me if you like it if you guys have been tuning in and you enjoy the video be sure to give it a like and a share and join the fleet by hitting that sub button. Help us grow and give more people an opportunity to check us out. Until then, this will be out in the open ocean. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.